get started today. Awesome. Welcome everyone to Grad Prep 2023. This is the Graduate College's opening week seminar series that we put on to kind of give you guys a running start as to some of the services we have here in the Graduate College. You'll hear from a couple of partners outside of the Graduate College later in the week. And then a couple of modules on kind of how to put together the academic side uh, as far as research, writing, keeping things together, finding balance. Um, then we have a session also on stress. So this graduate college comes with stress. You guys all know that probably for with your undergraduate degrees. Uh, maybe some of you are on doctorate level and have already done some graduate work. Uh, we're, we'll, we're here to help with some of that levels as well. Um, today's session, we're gonna title We Are GSSE. What I'm gonna do today is take you through all the things uh, that my office does, the Graduate Student Success Center. So I guess first things first, my name is Wayne Cochran. I am the coordinator for the Graduate Student Success Center, which is a mouthful. <laughs> we call it GSSC most of the time. Um, you can call it Success Center. You can, whatever name you put it on, we're here uh, to help you succeed. Um, what I'm going to do the next 40, 40 minutes or so is go through some of the programs that we have built uh, to help students succeed in different areas. Um, we'll highlight how, the, how they work, uh, how to access those things, and then give you a chance to ask some questions if you'd like as well. Um, ideally, you'll walk away at the end of this session with an overview of kind of at least, you know, kind of what services may appeal to you. And obviously, as any graduate students, a lot of you don't know necessarily what help you might need. You know, services appeal at different times in different places in the course of your career here. But we want to give you an overview of what we have so that you know at some point if a problem arises or if you need help with something, you can say, hey, I saw a presentation on that. I think this office can help. Um, ideally we can, if we can't, we also have partners that we can push you to as well. Cause we wanna be your first stop to say, hey, you know, let me know what's going on here. So for this first session, uh, generally instead of trying to get away from the PowerPoint slides, I usually just run students through our website. Um, now keep in mind, we'll probably make some changes to this as we go into the fall. We're in that season where we're kind of looking at how do we update it? How do we refresh it? So it may, the look may change a little bit as we go through the next few weeks, but the pieces should remain the same, at least as to what they are and kind of how they relate. Um, so this is kind of the overview about the Graduate Student Success Center. We're here to help you support you through all of your stages. So that probably needs updated right off the bat because I've listed, you know, oral defense, thesis of dissertation writing, and the submission process. Ultimately, this, this office was built originally around those three things. Uh, in the next last five years, we've really expanded out and as I go through this, we offer writing help. We're gonna offer help with, with presentations, which we'll get to in the second session today as well. Um, we put on skills presentations for different, different groups of students. We do a lot of things above and beyond just, you know, defending, writing your final project and graduating, um, which we'll get to uh, toward the end. So that's kind of a brief overview. And what I'm gonna do is take you, take you through some of these tabs here so that you know kind of where we are. I'm gonna start with this one, our writing assistance program. And I apologize, we need to up update this website as well. Um, this, this picture is not current. It's one of our coaches from the summer, but I, what we first started with when we wanted to branch out from thesis and dissertation, so to speak, is how do we help students who aren't in those programs? And a lot of you, I looked at the sheet there, most of you probably aren't in thesis and dissertation programs. You're gonna be doing capstones, portfolios, projects, you know, all really important scholarly work that doesn't necessarily fit under that traditional writing umbrella. But we wanna help you with that because it's still scholarly writing. It's still, you know, formatting. There are still ways for us to plug in and help you craft and shape um, and get your ideas across in the best way possible. So the thought we had with that is, is we, would, we would hire graduate assistants uh, for a couple of reasons. One, they're also, as, as graduate assistants, they're going through a lot of the same challenges that you will face. Um, our coaches are a little bit further along in their programs than say you incoming students are, but they're gonna understand if you come in and say, this is what I'm dealing with. You know, I'm, I'm looking at hurdle X, Y, or Z. Chances are they've either faced that or they know somebody who has, so they have that out of experience. Um, that even someone like myself, who's been out of graduate school for a few years, might not have that relevant like level of experience to plug in with. Um, and two, you're gonna get into that peer-to-peer that -peer reference um, as far as writing help. So I have two graduate assistants this semester. 
And um, I'll apologize for the, the, do you guys want to come up here for a second? <laughs> I'll call on them a little bit for, the, for those of you on online so you get a chance to see. And we'll get them up on the website as well here too. But I have two graduate assistants this, this school year, Mark and Lacey. Move, skip this way. There you go. <laughs> In the frame. And then it'll follow me. Uh, is that good? Okay. So Mark and Lacey. Uh, we'll get them set up on the website. So you'll be able to kind of, they'll have little bios and little blurbs um, here hopefully this week. But they're going to be here for all the needs you might have as far as any writing challenges you might face. Uh, well, that's just, well, that's formatting, uh, brainstorming, writer's block. I mean, you can use this for whatever you need to do to get over whatever particular challenge you're facing. Um, and you can do that with one appointment, as, we, as we'll find out here in a second, or you can make several appointments. We have students who'll come back um, for regular appointments and nothing else, just to stay accountable and to stay plugged in. Um, so we're here for as little or as much as you need us. And I'll go through the actual uh, rubric of how to schedule and how that works here um, in a second. But <clears throat> just hopefully you'll get to know Lacey Mark quite a bit this semester. Obviously, I'm available for stuff as well. This is kind of your core success team here when it comes to writing challenges and formatting documents. So keep that in mind as we go through here. Do you guys want to want to say anything? Do you want to save that for? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming up. Tomorrow. Yes. So as we go through the week here, correct, both Lacey and Mark will have uh, a solo presentation to give, and they're also going to talk in more depth tomorrow about what is graduate writing. So there'll be a, a longer session as to what goes, kind of tips and tricks to what goes into that as well. <clears throat> All right. So I'll slide down here. So you'll see this is kind of what it'll look like um, with a picture and a little blurb. And then, <clears throat> so there's kind of two avenues that we can do for to help with writing and how far as our coaches go. Um, <clears throat> And I'm, I'm not going to click on that button because it's going to change as we go through here. But there'll be a button at the bottom of the blurb that says schedule an appointment with Lacey or Mark. You click on that button and that should take you to we're going to we're switching over to a Google Calendar setup, but it should take you over to a link that would let you set up a time uh, with one of the two coaches. They'll have their schedule lined out to where they'll have blocks of time that are available for, for students to plug into. And then it'll be a matter of finding which coach you want to work with and then finding an available time with them. We do offer both Zoom and in-person appointments. A lot of our appointments are over Zoom. It's kind of left over from the pandemic. A lot of students really like the flexibility of logging in via Zoom, which we can totally do. If a student, you are on campus, and you do want to meet in person, that's perfectly acceptable as well. Uh, we'll, we'll take those types of appointments as well, um, whatever fits your schedule the best. But you'll block out that half an hour appointment. Now, once you block that appointment off, You'll more than likely get a little, little note from the coach that you've booked with that says, you know, great, you have an appointment with me. And a lot of times what they'll do is they'll ask for a sample ahead of time. Now, <clears throat> really what we want in that sample is just an idea of what you're working on, what your challenges are facing. Um, we can do it blind as you come in if you really need to just, I got I want to come in and talk this through today. Um, especially I mean, if you're having issues with writer's block or brainstorming or something like that we can do. But if you're actually working on a piece of writing that either you're struggling with or someone has, has given you corrections and says, hey, you need to address the, these, this issue, it's helpful to have that in advance if we can. So that way the coach can have it, <clears throat> look at it, kind of assess where the needs are, and that gives them a strategy for when you do come in or have that meeting on Zoom to say, okay, here's, here's my notes. Here's how I think we want to address that. Um, again, that may take one session. That may take two. It may be something the student wants to come in regularly for, and that's that's a relationship you can build uh, with the coach as you go. That is one of the things that, that separates us from the writing center. We do have a wonderful writing center here on campus. Don't be afraid to use them if you have questions or you need somebody to be more nuts and bolts type um, with your grammar or, or something along those lines. Uh, but what we try to do, what separates us as a graduate student is realizing we're going to try and meet you where you are. Realize, realizing that a lot of times the issues that you're having is not just, hey, I'm using too many commas or you know, this, <clears throat> this, this paragraph is not concise enough, right? We're looking for bigger patterns and, and, and relationship to help you be better writers from here to wherever you want to get to at the end. Um, and we'll just kind of follow you where you are. So we'll tailor what we do kind of to what you need, knowing that each student's going to come in and be different with the way that works. So far, that model has worked out really well for us. Um, I think we've, we've helped a lot of students 
Uh, I know there's a lot of students we've helped who may not have got to graduation without our, our assistance. Just if nothing else, just to have that support piece to rely on. They had the skills to do it, so to speak, but <clears throat> each student kind of has their own ebb and flow as to how they're here. Um, so that's if you want to make an appointment with a coach, which I would highly recommend at least once. If nothing else, just to, just to check in, just introduce yourself. Uh, you never know when that need is going to come around again as you move through your program. So I would encourage that. If that doesn't fit your schedule or your style, we also have an online component. If you just want one of us to take a look at your writing, um, again, say somebody, a professor has given it back to you and, and asked you to address something, or you know you're not good at something. Like the example I always use is, is commas. I overuse commas at times. And I know I do it. It's one of my things, and I can, I can feel myself when I'm doing it because I've had somebody tell me enough that it's like, hey, that's too many, right? But <clears throat> maybe you just want somebody to look just for that. Or you want somebody to say, look, this is what I'm trying to get across. Is this concise? Can you understand this? Um, and in that case, you can submit that piece of writing to us online. We generally can turn it around in a couple of days, but we will give you feedback to where you can adjust that without necessarily coming in and, and taking a meeting. Now you can utilize both depending on where you're at. And who knows, sometimes I know we've had students who have started out with an online consultation and ended up with a meeting with a coach and vice versa. I mean, you're, ideally when you're here, you'll kind of have a mixture of both um, would be the ideal setup. But again, we're trying to give you as many options as you can to get whatever you're working on in front of us to get you the help you need um, cool. as you move through. <laughs> So to sum that up, as far as we go through there, again, the goal of our Bronco Finish Line, which is our writing program, is to not only improve the writing, but the writer itself. So we're gonna ask questions to help you expand or clarify your ideas. We're gonna identify patterns um, with idea, uh, the, the goal of uh, getting you to identify the patterns so that you know when you look at the writing, you can say, okay, I see it now, um, to where you can hopefully address some of those issues yourself as time goes on so that you can teach them how to recognize and correct those so your future projects just get better and better as you go through. Now, we're gonna always be here. I mean, no writer is ever perfect. I mean, I, I've been doing this now for five years and I've been, I've been kind of in academia for a lot longer than that. And even I know you're not gonna sit down and crank out that perfect paper right off the bat. I'm sure there maybe are a student or two here who, who have that ability to just, poof, there it is. Most of us don't. So you got that idea that even, even as you improve and you recognize and you hone and become a better writer, there's always gonna be something that comes up. And we're gonna be here for that as we go through for help as well. So that's just kind of my pitch for um, encouragement along those lines to just know that we're gonna know, you know, just because you come in and say, hey, I need help with this paragraph or this paper or this project or this, whatever it is, that that's not a knock on you. That's just a, an admission that, hey, I just, it, you know, I need a few extra pieces of support to kind of get over whatever hump is, is in front of me. Um, and again, we'll be here to meet you where you are. <clears throat> All right. And if there are any questions, I mean, you guys in the room here can stop me. I'll ask them. If, for those of you who are online, if you have a question, you can throw it in the chat um, and we can address those as well. Um, I know I'm going to hit you with quite a bit of information here in 40 minutes. So if you, if you <laughs> feel the need to throw your hands up, or come see me afterward, or yeah, whatever, whatever we need to do. Yes. Does it? Yep, exactly. It doesn't matter, big or small. We have a lot of students, obviously, who are working on larger pages, projects like thesis and dissertation. Uh, we work quite a bit with. Where's my social work student? Yeah, we work quite a bit with social work. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. That's good. Good thing. So the question is, is, is what types of writing projects is this program designed for? Is this designed for anything um, that might be produced here at Boise State? The answer to that question is yes. Um, we will handle any project, big or small. Um, the range that I usually use to kind of give you an example of where that falls is that we've helped students with something as simple as a discussion board post. Um, just wanted to get in and someone who was not confident about throwing their writing out in public. Um, to be able to hone that argument to all the way up to theses and dissertations. We work with a lot of programs, like I say, like social work, who do a lot of clinical writing, um, some research, but a lot of it kind of got to find that sweet spot between clinical and academic because they are slightly different and they don't always mesh together. Um, so we can meet you in that intersection of, you know, 
I know what I'm talking about. I know this is concise, but to someone who isn't in my field, you know, help me craft this to someone who isn't in social work or computer science understands my work. That's where we find those niches together. Um, and that's what I tell a lot of students who will come in as well, looking for writing help. Obviously, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a math guy. You hand me a paper with lots of equations and squiggles in it. I will get through it. I sort of understand, you know, the framework, but I'm not going to know 90% of what's in there per se. But what I can tell you is if you tell me, here's what my project is about. Here's what I want to convey to my reader. I can tell you if you got there or not, you know, whether the content's going to be there all the time. But what I can do is make sure that you know that 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 non that lay audience picks stuff up and can understand what you're writing. That's where we're we're really good at that. And I'm going to have the same with my coaches. We're going to have a different ear than someone who's in your field because they're probably going to focus more on, well, OK, I'm following your equations. I'm following your experiments. We're going to be more along the lines of can we follow the understanding, the writing, the readability. Um, and help you craft that. So we kind of work in tandem. That's a great question. Any other questions on the the writing piece before I move on to some other stuff with you? Yeah, come on in. <laughs> We're all, we've all been in graduate school. It's totally fine. Come on in, more than merrier. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to a couple of things I want to get to here. Um, Let's see what we'll do next. We'll go to workshops next. And we will flesh this website out here a little bit as we go as well. But we have three kind of main categories we fit in as far as our presentation workshops that we do here in the Success Center. Obviously, this is grad prep. You guys are in the middle of that that just started. Um, there's an idea of kind of what we've done in the past as far as some of the sessions. Um, a lot of them are the same, and we've done several, like the library and what is writing. I mean, some of them we do year after year because they're relevant to every group of students who come in. Um, and then we generally try to pick out a couple. Now, this year, like we're like conquering stress. We'll do some that maybe we won't do every semester, but kind of fit in with the overall arc to kind of have, provide our themes for grad prep. Um, all these sessions we recorded and put online. So obviously, you know, those of you here, even the ones that are joining us via Zoom, can go back and rewatch them um, if you ever get to the point where. It's like, I know he talked about that, but I'm not sure you know, where he said to go. Uh, you can go back and reference our old, uh, old presentations as well uh, for grad prep. The second category we have, yeah, come on in. <laughs> yeah, come on in. No, that's right. Um, <clears throat> the second category, what we call grad skills. I don't know if you noticed the recurring theme though, but I like to put the word grad in front of stuff so then I know it's mine. Um, not all of it, there's a few grad programs that aren't mine to start with grad, but in general, that's kind of the umbrella that I like to put under it. Grad skills is pretty pretty simple, just what it says. It's our idea of we usually try to put on two or three workshops per semester that <clears throat> help students build skills. Um, you'll see on there, there's a couple of uh, examples. Um, one of them, which we turned into another presentation, which I'm gonna give here in a minute here about communicating scholarship. Uh, we always do a, a, a module on how to prepare for your oral defense, which, May sound a ways off for those of you who are just starting, but it also really is good information for anybody who's going to be doing presentations. Yes, Adrian. There's a question online. Yes. Is the program designed for only master's students or PhD interested? That's a good question. So the question um, is: it, Is it designed for master's or PhD? It's designed for both. <clears throat> we'll handle any any graduate student. Now that's kind of where, where we will want to get to know what program you're on, what track you're on. Now we will tailor our services because so there are times where there are some unique challenges that master students face that doctoral students don't and vice versa. So it's not necessarily a one size fits all program, but it is designed to run on both tracks. So, but depending where you're at, just let us know where you're at and kind of where you need the assistance and we'll fill in um, the programs. We've had pretty good success with that. And if we need to bring in an outside partner for something, we will as well. So that's a good question. Um, and hopefully we'll tailor the grad skills programs the same way. Ideally, my goal then is to bring skills levels that will, will apply to all graduate students, not just one group or the other. Um, it's not always easy to do. We see even within the, the doctoral and master's students, I mean, there's just, it's a wide, there's just a wide variety of scholarship that there are times when we hit kind of the high points and then we have to kind of fine tune with workshops for specific groups, which we'll do as well. If there's a specific doctoral, or master's group who are all kind of wanting information on one topic, we can also put together a workshop as well. We've done that in the past. A student has um, 
message me and say, hey, my, my faculty members want me to have more experience with this. Do you offer this type of workshop? That particular semester we didn't. So uh, we worked with that student to find a faculty member who would give a workshop on, he wanted to know more about grant proposals. Um, so if there is something that's that's listed here, great. If that is in your wheelhouse, if you know of something that you or your cohort could really benefit from, shoot me an email and say, hey, do you have this workshop available? Or could you, is this something we can develop? Um, if it's within our purview to do, we'll try to make it work uh, as far as developing that workshop. Um, all of these workshops have come out of, for the most part, identifying well, where, where, where do students need assistance, where are their holes, um, and trying to fill those gaps. Um, and I'm sure there are still, I mean, there's always gaps out there to fill. So we're always looking for new material as well. Um, <clears throat> so generally we'll have that calendar out. I'm gonna shoot for early September um, and hopefully we'll spread them out so they'll, they'll mix in with the semester and be relevant to kind of where students are in the course of the semester. <clears throat> the last piece of the puzzle for the workshop series that we do, we call Grad Right. And it normally has an online version with it too. We don't always do the online version depending on, on, uh, on need and availability, but they do kind of work hand in hand. Grad write is our ability to just give you guys space and time to write. We usually do that. We try to do one Saturday a semester. Uh, we do a full week of grad write um, the first week of January in between the fall and spring semesters. The idea there is to get, a, to get a jump on the project. Like if you know you're going into that last semester and you're going to be working on your thesis or dissertation or your, your portfolio, and you know you've got big chunks of writing to work with, we're gonna open up, we usually open up the whole third floor here. We usually have lunches and snacks and really just feed you most of the day. and just give you an idea to say, hey, come for the four days or five days of grad write and just work on your projects. Um, Chances are, we're, I, I think for this next January one, we're going to have two tracks. We'll probably have some tracks for people who are in that group. And then for students like yourself who may be a little earlier in the works who maybe aren't working on that larger piece, I think we'll also try to have some sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, a boot camp version um, to where we can have more, more structured time. Because um, there are some students, obviously, who are ready to just kind of lock themselves in a corner and work on their projects. Some students who might want to have that opportunity to have a more structured classroom setting. And I have some new templates from this summer that will hopefully incorporate with that. Uh, but we'll do that in, in January, right, right after the new year. And again, we'll probably do another Saturday in the spring semester. Um, and then again in the summertime. So we'll probably try to hit um, a grad right slash boot camp probably in, in July. Um, for students who are coming back in the fall and again, want to get a jump start on the fall semester. Um, ideally, I think this is helpful for a couple of reasons. One, I know as a graduate student, even though it has been a while, that was always my problem was getting started and just putting that stuff off and not wanting to get started with the writing. Once I got started, it was better. Um, but this can also be an opportunity for those students out there who are like me, who have issues with just getting started. Um, and two, we'll come back to the peer-to-peer -peer stuff. It's really powerful to me. Um, I know the coaches will be on hand um, as they're available. So it's nice to be able to throw your hand up and say, hey, and get, get help real time. But it's also nice to connect peer-to-peer because -peer you'll get a room uh, with our, our grad right where we'll have social scientists and social workers and engineers. Um, and you're all working on kind of the same, the same framework. I mean, you're working on the same level of project but it's all slightly different enough. And it's just amazing sometimes about how those tables come together um, and students kind of share what they're working on and get that feedback because that graduate student looks at it and says, well, that's not my field, but here's what I got out of this project. You know, have you ever thought about changing this, this or this, or I would take that out or I would move that. Um, I know that type of feedback to me is really powerful. I've seen it work in action. I've seen students just with that light bulb go off above their head in that moment, like, hey, no one's pointed that out to me before that does work better. Um, and especially as, as you're collaborating back and forth. So I, it's one of the more fun things that I think we get to do here um, in the Success Center as we get through. Um, obviously we deal with a lot of students individually. Um, the coaches see students individually. I, I see all the theses and dissertations that come through. So I do. we do see a fair amount of student writing, but this is kind of the one event that kind of puts them together, allows them to interact with each other, which I think is a piece we need to maintain and grow if we can. <clears throat> Any questions on our, our uh, grad skills? Okay, 
I'm going to throw out one other thing that I don't have on here because it's brand new. I just finished kind of putting it together last week. So we'll hopefully get it up and flesh it out here in the next couple of weeks. But I also want to implement something this, this semester we're going to call Thesis Academy, uh, which will be kind of may not be applicable to everybody who's, who's here or watching online. Um, but for our thesis and dissertation students, what this program is going to be designed to do is to help you get through that last two semesters, so to speak. Um, I get a lot of questions as far as, you know, which forms come in when, um, when, you know, when deadlines are due, when defenses are due, what do I do after I've submitted my paper and it's up for review. Um, ideally, we'll, help, we'll have a couple of tracks there to help the students and the faculty members as well. So keep that in the back of the mind. You guys are unique in the fact that as incoming students, that's probably a little ways off. So by the time you get to the point where you're doing uh, that final final process, and I do hope to at some point include the students who aren't thesis dissertation. So I haven't forgot about you. We're just gonna have to figure out. That's what, that'd be a little bit more of a, of a lift because it's more program specific, but um, just keep that in mind as you go through here. And for those of you who are in thesis or dissertation programs, just know that that, that help that's already there kind of informally when people come in and talk to me, we're going to try to help formalize that for you and your faculty so that that process goes as smooth as possible. Cause there's enough stress involved when you get to that last semester and you're already working on writing, researching and presenting that we want to try to not add, add more stress to what is already stressful. Cause that's what we're here for is to help you, help you guide you through that process. And I'll have more information that up on the website here, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to hit two more things. I'm going to hit these really quickly because this is, um, I'm just going to mention them here and then we'll talk about them a little bit more uh, in the communicating uh, session that comes right after this, is that we're also going to have opportunities for professional development. Um, and again, I'll get into more of, as to why these are important as we go through here, but we have two main uh, competitions that we do in the graduate college every year. One of them is the Graduate Student Showcase, which is great. <laughs> the other one is Three Minute Thesis, which my office runs. Um, these are great ways not only to polish and, com and compete, and I would say these are competitions at their heart. So there are opportunities to win money, scholarships. Um, for 3MT in particular, there's a chance to compete with other schools like the U of I and Idaho State. Um, we have a student, we've won, or we've placed first, first, and second at a regional competition in the last three years. So we have a student going to nationals in DC in December for 3MT. Um, so there's an opportunity here, not only that, but to really put yourself out there and really get that those types of accolades as well. But at the heart of it, and I'll go through, I'll, I'll go into this in the next session in even more detail, but the heart of that, these are a chance to build skills, a chance to be able to pitch your work, um, to be able to talk about your work for someone who doesn't understand the thing you're saying. <laughs> Um, which you know, a lot of you are doing really great and, and intricate work that not everyone's gonna be able to comprehend because they don't have the background. And that's the challenge that we face in today's world too is in going out and talking to them. I mean, that elevator pitch and you never know when that's gonna come. And that could be as simple as your family member. It could be some, as, as complicated as I need someone to give me money. Um, and we'll go, over, we'll go over some more details of that here in a second. But as you're here, and I know it might be a little early to participate in these as incoming students, although not impossible, but maybe a little bit um, not something you can wrap your mind around right now, but I would encourage you while you're in your program here um, to participate in these competitions. And don't let the word thesis throw you. We will take any student who's doing research here at Boise State. Again, that can be capstone, portfolio, class research paper, um, you know, thesis, dissertation, anything that you've done here at Boise State that you've worked on, that you've researched, or that you were in the process of researching. Again, you don't necessarily have to, this doesn't have to be a finished product where I've done research X, Y, and Z, and here are my results. We've had a lot of students who've come in and competed a couple of times and honed their project along the way. It's like, well, here's my goal. Here's what I'm working on now. Here's some more results. Here's how this project has changed. And we've had some students, I think, who've done it three years in a row, which may not be for everybody, but ideally here, again, this is the idea. We're gonna give you, give you students opportunities to put yourself out there, to talk about your work, to put you in front of people who can hear about your work and really hone in on those skills. So and I'll go into more of those here in a little bit. I hit the high points there because I, I don't want to ruin my next presentation. Um, and then let's see. And then the last tab on here, like I say, we'll go, I'll click on it and then I'll leave some time for questions here. And then that gives us about five minutes to roll over. But <clears throat> excuse me. This is your hub. And this 
may look different at some point, but as, is, as I said a couple of times, we are your hub for thesis and dissertation information. So if you are in a program where you're gonna write a thesis or dissertation at the end, you're looking at the person you're gonna go through, we're gonna work with, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be reviewing your document for the graduate college. Um, and here's all the pieces that go into that. And I could spend, we could spend a whole, a whole half a day going through each one of these buttons and telling you what they are. But suffice it to say, this is where you're gonna come if you have a question about a deadline, about what kind of documents need to come in, um, how to format, how to prepare for your defense, how it gets submitted at the end. I mean, each one of these buttons will kind of be relevant to you or relevant to you as you go through the program. But I want students to be aware that we do have a hub like this built for that to where say, oh, I have that question. It's a great place to start. Now, obviously, if you click on one of those squares and you read the directions and you go, huh? Then that's when you can pick up the phone or you can email me and say, hey, I, this is, you know, this is my understanding of how this works. Can you help me through the process? And I will certainly guide students through and tell you, okay, here's where you need to be at each step. Um, and again, Thesis Academy will hopefully help that as well. Um, but I want to show students that. I mean, there's a couple of things in here like the oral defense stuff that'll also play into the communication. So there's some overlap here as well. It's not just deadlines and forms per se um, as you go through. Ideally, I think that is what we offer for right now. Like I say, that may change. We're always looking for new programs and new ways to add stuff to the programs. Hopefully you've gotten an idea as going through here of just kind of what we have built so far and what we have available in-house in the graduate college to help you succeed. Now, as we go through the week, obviously we'll bring in other partners like the library. Uh, there are a lot of other programs on campus like, like Gradwell. Um, one of the new things that we'll have this, this semester is we have a brand new recruiting specialist here and she's, also, she's housed in, my, in our office down in 117. We're, down, we're downstairs in 117, by the way. I probably should have led with that. Um, we have that new glass office as you come in the, in, the, in the building there. It's nice and open and bright. We're super friendly most of, you know, most of the time, right? No, we're friendly. But, but our recruiting specialists will also be housed in the, in the success in our offices, suites downstairs. Um, and I do know, as you can put it out, I know she's looking for graduate assistance. And I also know that we're launching what we're going to call our graduate ambassadors program. And I know she's looking for graduate students for both of those things. So if you're interested in either one of those programs, let me, you can come up and talk to me afterward or not. I will help put you in touch with Lindsay. Uh, but I know she'd love to talk to any student who's interested in filling one of those two positions because I know she's looking, she's building a program from the ground up and it's really coming together well, but she's going to need some student help. So if you are interested or you know somebody who might be, let me know and I say, I'll, I'll put you in touch and we can make that connection. Um, to help uh, with that recruiting effort as we go forward. Are there any questions? Again, I, I know that's a lot in 40 minutes. Yeah. That's an odd question, but do you guys have a thought of like mock interviews or uh, going on with the interviews with regards to the PhD program? We haven't done that specifically as far as the interviews go, but we have as part of the, the 3MT process. Um, we do offer coaching and practice sessions for those. And I think that's that's similar, so we could probably tailor that. Um, we do have some instances where a student will come in and want to work on their presentations. Um, but I think, uh, I think on general, if, if you give us some lead time, we could tailor that to where if you wanted to come in for an interview, we could certainly, you know, give you that opportunity because yeah, it's definitely, definitely helpful. Yes, Adrian. Uh-huh. Is the grad assistance part open to the both students too? Mm, so is the, is the graduate assistant open to remote students? That I will have to ask Lindsay about. I don't, I don't know the nature of that. Um, if you want to send, you got can you get that get that student's information and I'll I'll put them in touch with Lindsay and she can and they can ask, will that work? I, I don't want to commit her one way or the other because I I, <laughs> I I don't know it's a possibility I, mean, I would say it's probably a possibility I don't I mean depending on how it fits together but that's contingent upon how she wants to build it so I'll I'll let her speak to that but but I definitely would reach out because never it never hurts to ask right. What are the winners of those three? Uh, cash, uh, for the most part. Our, right now, our prizes for first, second, and third are 750 500 and 250 There's an audience choice member or winner that gets another 250 And then we take our top four students to state where the prizes, I think, are 1000 750 500 um, This last year at state, we took first and second, I believe, right? So... Um, so it's kind of a combination. We have cash prizes for that. And then for the showcase as well, there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot of money available in the showcase that 
each department puts on different different awards for different types of posters. I mean, there's a president's award, the graduate college gives out awards. I mean, there's thousands of dollars available for that as you go through. Yeah, yeah. So it's a definite, you know, I do want to downplay that. It is a significant chunk, especially for a graduate student potentially. I mean, we had obviously a couple of students who won top prizes both here and at state that did make, you know, a pretty good, pretty good amount of money for their prizes. And then also had the chance, the other nice thing about three minute thesis is, 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 and you go through that, is that we'll put you in front of, uh, we pull from the community for judges. Last year, we had the mayor and I think a couple of CEOs from some of the bigger businesses in Boise. Um, and then same for the, the statewide, they pulled from, you know, the CEOs and administration kind of of the area. So we'll put you in front of uh, some people like that. So obviously you'll get some recognition from that as well. I just, it's kind of a twofold thing. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. Anything else? Any questions? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, absolutely. I have experience with Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the question here we have here is we'll go back to the question about the personal statements, and Lacey's mentioning that she has experience in that realm. So for those of you who are online, if that is something that interests you, we do have a coach on staff who, who has that expertise and has that experience. So please reach out. I think you already okay. answered this question, but just coming online. Is three minute thesis available for remote students or does it have to be in person? For now, we do it in person. Um, I, eventually, I want to get to the point where we bring in remote students. We have not quite integrated that technology yet. So for now, it's in person, but I'll keep that in mind because um, I know there probably are a lot of good remote students who we miss out on by having the competition be here. So for now, unfortunately it is in person, but I'll keep, we'll, we'll keep working on that to bring those in because I know there's probably ways to do it technology wise. Yeah. So for the three minute thesis, is it like anyone can apply and anyone can present or is it there's a collection process? There's a, there's a process we'll go through. Um, so anyone can sign up. We don't restrict, there's not a quota necessarily for how many participate per se. Um, um, but what we'll do to narrow that down, we do only have a select number that actually compete in the finals. I think last year we had, I want to say 16. So depending on how we have that, I mean, obviously if we have 35 students, we got to have a way to take 35 down to, to 16. So to do that, what we do is we have what we call a preliminary round in the middle, kind of think of it as a playoff. Um, everybody goes through the same process to prepare, but everybody puts together the same slide and presentation. And then instead of picking kind of who goes where, you guys actually compete. So we'll, we'll, we'll gather a panel of judges. Um, we usually pull from the higher administration, like the non-academic units, so that we know there's no bias uh, there. And then we'll break the students into two halves, and then it'll be like the top, the top 16 get through. Um, so there is a little bit of hierarchy here as far as getting to the end, but we try to build a program to where everybody, everybody gets to compete, everybody gets a chance in front of the judges whether that's preliminary or you know and or finals, but everybody kind of has the same experience all the way through, and then it kind of tears from there. Because I don't, I ideally I want everybody to have that chance to do that presentation at least once, so make it worth a while. All right, great questions. That's good. A lot of times when I finish this presentation, I just get the fire hose look like wow. So that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll wrap up that session then because we got we're supposed to start the next one here at 1045. And then we'll talk a little bit more about three minute thesis, which is good um, in the course of the thing. Um, yeah. So those of you that are sticking around for the next session, please do so. If you're not, I have a great day. Hopefully you'll be here. I say we have two sessions tomorrow about uh, conquering stress and what is writing. Wednesday sessions are kind of geared toward research and the library will be here. And then Thursday, we're going to talk about how, how to find mentors, how to plug into that, that uh, mentorship network here at Boise State. Um, so we have a great week prepared. Hopefully, you guys are all signed up for orientation on Friday. This, this kind of leads into orientation where you'll get kind of an overview of everything. Um, but hopefully, you'll have some knowledge in your back pocket by the time you get there. So thanks for listening for this morning. And I say I hope to see you again, a lot of you again in a couple of minutes. All right. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I saw your faces. Uh, this is session two for grad prep. Um, this is where we're going to talk about what I've called communicating style, Boise State Edition. Um, 
I don't know if that's any different necessarily than the other editions per se. This is going to be um, what I'd like to do today. And we'll, again, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the competitions we have and kind of the purpose where they fill things. Um, but I'm going to give you some, some tips as to kind of what goes into communicating at the graduate college level or graduate school level. Um, kind of go over some of the challenges that people face in communicating. And again, then I'll try to plug in some of the tools that we have that we've already talked about where they fit into that those that hierarchy, so to speak. And then obviously if there are any questions, we can adjust from there as well. So I'm gonna, there, I'm gonna minimize that for now. Okay, so for introduction, again, we're gonna go over here. Let's say communication is an essential skill for success in graduate school. Um, as we'll go through a couple of times, I mean, there's gonna be various levels of communication. You're gonna have that technical in, in department communication with your advisors, your classmates, your, your, your professors. Um, you're gonna have communication outside of your area. Like when you're doing things we'll talk about like with three minute thesis and showcase um, or grad writer, anytime you're, you're around um, potentially other graduate, graduate students and other programs. Um, when you're out in, in society, whether that's you know internships, jobs, um, on those things, or family members. I mean, all, the, all that falls into play. Uh, but you're going to have to be able to communicate with those different groups, professors, classmates, collaborators, professionals. Um, and that effect, communication has to be effective. If you, if you can't get across um, not only what you're working on, but where the significance lies, how that fits in with the person in front of you. Um, again, this, the example that I use a lot of times is at some point, invariably, especially for if you go on into um, research or academia, you're going to probably end up asking somebody for money to fund a proposal. It's like, I need, I need X amount of dollars to study this. Um, and it's a handy skill to be able to have, to be able to boil that down into that snippet to be able for that person to grab a hold of it. Um, so this, this is going to effectively determine your success, not only your coursework, research, and career. So what I'm looking at to do today in a very high arcing sense, because we only have like 40 minutes, so it's definitely a, a overarching umbrella, uh, discuss the importance of communication and give you some tips for communicating effectively in different settings. And then I'll discuss some common challenges and how to overcome them. That's the wrong way. There you go. So communication is important for a number of reasons. First, it's essential for learning. Obviously, me, I'm standing up here right now trying to effectively communicate to you. Um, as we said in the last session, I tried to effectively communicate like six different programs that my office runs in a manner that you'll be able to grab a hold of and at least remember uh, some of the details of. Now, obviously, in that instance, when you have that laundry list of things, you know, I try to be as concise as possible, but that's one of the things you look at is, you know, am I giving too much information? Am I hitting them with too much at once? Am I structuring in a way that it gets through? Um, ideally, you walk away from one of my presentations knowing if nothing else, it's like, I know who to contact if. Um, but that's always the challenge when you're communicating there, especially when you're trying to convey large bits of information. Um, and honestly, my the stuff I convey to you in that presentation isn't as nearly as technical as a lot of your research or work will be, obviously. Um, so you have had a challenge of that, um, presenting those things. <clears throat> but also realizing that communication goes both ways. You're going to be learning from the communication of others, too. And I think that's a key component sometimes that gets lost, especially when we think of um, working on things like your elevator pitch. Um, there has to also be some give and take then because ideally what you'll have is, is you'll give that and then you have communication back from whoever you're collaborating with. And ideally that builds a partnership. So you have to learn kind of that two-way street, that communication, because you have to understand, they have to understand you and you have, they have to be asked, they have to be able to communicate with you what I did and didn't understand. Um, and it's an ebb and flow because there are gonna be times where, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a time where you give a presentation and you'll think this, this is really super simple. Everyone's gonna get this. And you're gonna get six questions about that section. And you're gonna have a section that's a little more technical. You think, okay, this is where people are gonna bog down and everybody's just like, yep, I'm good. I just, you just never know where the, where the points are gonna be. You have to be nimble enough to address all of those instances. Second, obviously communication is important for research. Um, as you go through here, maybe not all of you will be working again on like major research papers per se, but you're all doing research projects. Uh, you're all doing research for class. Clinical work kind of falls under that category. Um, where you're out in, um, you know, clinics, um, hospitals, places where maybe the writing you do is clinical, but you're still working with other people um, and kind of communicating those ideals. I touched on that before. I mean, it's, 
it's not as profound as you would think coming from the outside, but I know I've talked to a lot of students who have come back from working in the field for a while and then come back for their degree and realize that this style of writing they've fallen into that's perfectly acceptable and is great and is totally the way it's supposed to be doesn't work in the academic setting. Um, and we'll get into more of that tomorrow when we talk about what is graduate writing, but there's always those, those little instances where you've got to plug in, you know, academic writing is just a little bit different than um, some other places. And again, finding those niches where you can conduct that research and write that up in a way that communicates that to others, um, including all these categories we've talked about. And the last thing I'll say on here too is importance. And again, this is kind of what we've tried to build here and I'll, I'll build out on this more of the competitions is it's also important for networking. Um, to go back to, we'll talk about, you know, again, 3MT and the showcase, but those competitions are also important for networking. You're gonna to get to know students and other peers and other uh, disciplines. We try to involve as many faculty members, administration members as we can. Like I say, we're gonna bring in outside groups from the community to judge and participate wherever possible. So there are lots of opportunities in all these competitions that we've built for networking, for putting yourself in front of somebody you may not see otherwise. Um, <clears throat> And you'll also, as you go through here, you'll meet new people in your field as well. Again, you'll probably all have to go out on and do research in the field. You'll all work in uh, practicums, clinics, um, things like that. You'll have opportunities for other places on campus to participate and sign up for events as well, not just what the Graduate College puts on. Um, so you're gonna meet a lot of people while you're here as well. And you're gonna wanna build effective relationships again, as we go through here and we'll talk about it on Thursday as well. The idea of finding that, that right fit with the mentor finding that group of collaborators, and then eventually as we move toward the end, obviously employers, um, wherever that happens to be. I mean, whether you're going into academia, you're going into business, you're going into public administration, um, well, you're all gonna be dealing with employers on some level, maybe different types in different ways, but that conversation kind of always shifts that way as you look at what's next um, as, as you finish up your degree here. And again, if I go too fast here, stop me and this is, Wrong way. Why do I want to go backwards? All right, tips. I like tips. Um, <clears throat> so tips, some tips for communicating effectively in graduate school. I think I've hit on a few of these, but we're going to just kind of flesh them out a little bit as we go through here. Be clear and concise. Um, I know as a graduate student, and my background's in history, so I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I have, it's, it's dormant, but I think it's in there still, the ability to really talk around a problem over and over again, you know, come back, circle back, add this piece in, circle back again. Um, cause that's the style of writing I did when I was in my project, um, kind of adding those layers on the historical subject. Now, obviously you gotta do that in a way that's concise to your reader. Um, so that's what they have to do with your program is take whatever you're working on, try to make it as clear and concise as possible. Now, obviously you can't necessarily lose the gist of what you're saying, but <clears throat> you have to make sure your message is clear to understand. So maybe some of the, some of the stuff may be like, say, when I get a document, but I don't quite understand all of the ins and outs of, I always watch out and make sure I have the message. As long as I have the message, then I know that even if I didn't get that particular swath of, of paragraph or that equation or that experiment, I did understand what it was for and what it accomplished. Um, and that is something you always want to work on. And then try to, when you're, when you're communicating, not to use jargon or technical terms. Now, obviously, if you're in a you know committee meeting, you're in a class with all of your classmates and professors, you I mean, you don't, you can probably get away with more jargon in that setting um, if you're in a room full of people who understand what that means. But just kind of read the room that you're in and know that if you're in a room that, that where someone's not gonna have that background or that may cause some lack of understanding, that's when the jargon and the technical terms kind of have to, you have to mold those so that that person can understand. Um, and it's it's kind of trial and error. You kind of work, you, you as you work through it, you kind of figure out what works for you. Um, as saying in the six years that I've done 3MT, it's, it's, it's always a process um, when students come in that first time and, you know, their presentation is, okay, I have it locked down. Here's all the essential things that have to be in this presentation. Otherwise, it's just gibberish. And they go to give that presentation and it's five and a half minutes long. So, which is great. That's a learning experience because like I said, that, that tells you that it's like, okay, this is what I deemed really important. I don't have five minutes, right? Um, and I'll, I can describe a little bit more about what goes on here in a second, but um, that is the start of the process there as far as being clear and concise. And sometimes it takes that and you got to whittle it down. As I noted earlier with writing, very rarely, even in a communication setting, are you going to get that exactly right? Like, okay, I hit my, I got three minutes and I hit it just right. You know, 
Maybe there are people out there that can do that. I know there are people who can just off the cuff, just do that. I'm not one of those people and I don't expect anybody else to be um, as far as they work to it. The second tip there is to be organized. I mean, when you give a presentation, writing a paper, you gotta make sure your idea is organized in a logical way. Um, they gotta be able to follow your train of thought and that's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I know, again, to reference the, the research work that I see on a regular basis, you, you can tell, especially when you get into a larger research project, the students who are really hyper-organized, you know, bam, 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 and the ones who kind of struggle to put that together on paper. You know, you, the thoughts are there, the skills there, you can see with the passion that went into the work, you can see the scholarship, it's all there. I, I, can, see, I can tell how they did it. Just transitioning that in that organizational sense to be able to communicate that is a struggle sometimes because sometimes that's not, you know, that may not be a student strong suit. And that's okay. We can work around that. We can teach skills. We can help students be better with that. Um, but organization does help when it's it's when it's not organized. It's hard to get through. Um, the third thing on there I can speak to just be confident. Um, I can be honest with this group. Standing in front of a group like you, having you know twelve people online, you know when I took this job six years ago, that I that would have been you're going to make me do what. Um, but it gets to the point where you know, realize each each class that comes in and you get more comfortable doing it. Um, I mean, obviously, some of these presentations, like, you know, I, I could I could talk to you for hours what my office does and go into, OK, you want to talk about this program? And that's more it's more conversational now because it's something I'm highly familiar with. But I also have the confidence in that because knowing that's my piece. And obviously, you should have that. You will have that when you get into your work and you're presenting that to someone because obviously that's your work. You're the expert on that. Um, you all have faculty members you know, guiding and shaping that message as well, but ultimately it's your work um, to get across. So be confident in that um, when you're communicating, project that. That's one of the things we work on with 3MT the most is just having that confidence and projecting that, knowing you got this, this is yours. No one else can take that away from you. Um, and it makes it more persuasive and it's more connecting. Um, <clears throat> be respectful when you're communicating, you know, kind of be respectful of their time and opinions. Um, I be careful or listen carefully to what they have to say. Uh, this goes back to this concept of active listening, which is an acquired skill, not always easy at times, um, especially if the feedback or the, or the communication you get is, you know, critical. Ideally, hopefully you'll have constructive criticism here. I mean, that's part of the nature of the beast of being a graduate school. You're going to have times where, you know, a peer group or a professor or someone says, that's great, but, you know, let's do it this way. I want you to go this direction. And ideally that'll be constructive. It'll be, it'll be working together. It'll be a good experience. Maybe not all the time. I mean, all those certain, certain points um, where you may have to face some challenges on that front, but just keep that in mind um, that there's gonna be um, times where you get wonderful plaudits for your work. There's gonna be times where that person says, go back and work on this some more, but take that communication and listen to that and be respectful of that. And it feeds into the last one there, be open to feedback. Um, it's one of the, thing, the things I like about some of these events that we put on because uh, there is a chance for not only me to kind of get feedback from you, but also, again, your fellow students. I can't stress that enough in some of these presentations we do that uh, <laughs> that uh, the, that peer-to-peer -peer networking. And you'll find that you'll, you guys, you will do that on your own on a lot of levels, uh, especially in your cohorts and your groups, sometimes out of it. I mean, you'll obviously connect with a lot of people while you're here of all all various backgrounds and and disciplines um but just use that feedback i say take that advice um i just i've seen it happen again a numerous times where two students who would appear have nothing in common academically just come together and it's like it's like the mind meld you know the science fiction -y thing where it's just like oh you know i've got six different ideas for what you just read me right um same thing with your presentation style uh, when we get into our practice sessions for some of our events I, it's always more powerful when a student throws their hands up and says, that was great, but, you know, uh, you know, here's, here's three things that I would change. And it never comes across as, it's like, that's bad, change it. It's, it's like, hey, let's have an idea. Let's have a collaboration. Uh, let's communicate on how this could be improved. Um, and I think that's more valuable than someone just telling, just like ticking boxes on it and say, you know, change this, change that, change this. Um, but it's a struggle because sometimes it's easier just to just to check the boxes than it is to communicate and you know give feedback. I'm gonna go the right direction. No, no. Challenges. Common communications and challenges we face here. I don't know how many of you here are nervous about speaking in public. 
Okay, that's that's good. That's good. I've put my hand up, I guess, as well. But I mean, that that's totally natural. And again, it's one of the things we look at here in the Success Center is knowing that there's going to be different types. Because yeah, there are some students who have no problem if I were to hand them a piece of paper and say, present this now, they'll stand up and they'll just run with it. It's like, okay, here's, you know, here's X, Y, and Z. This is totally fine. And I'll get some students, I mean, if, if I give them time to prepare, it'll be fine. And then there'll be some that'll just be like deer in the headlights. Um, if you just, if you put them on the spot like that. <clears throat> so just know that there are many that are nervous about public speaking. Unfortunately, just know as a graduate student, you're probably going to have to do that at some point in, in the course of your of your time here. Again, whether you sign up for competitions or not, you're gonna have oral presentations, defenses, committee meetings, committee proposals. You're gonna have opportunities that you're gonna to have to stand up. And maybe it's only three or four people, maybe it's 30. I mean, but you're gonna have that, that, that moment where you have to be the spotlight. Um, so just own up to that nervousness, nervousness and just know there's things you can overcome that. One of the things you can do to overcome that, which I mean, it sounds simple and you probably all know this in the back of your mind is practice. Um, I know when we do our competitions, our students usually, by the time they've given that speech, we practice at least three or four times. Um, we go back to the preliminary rounds where they give a chance in front of judges. I mean, by the time we actually get to the competition at the end, most of the students have given that speech, at least in front of me or the judges, at least four or five times. I know they're practicing their groups because we, we stress that. Um, it's just, it, it, it's crazy how um, looking at that, <clears throat> you can do it in front of a mirror. I mean, that, that will work as well. The suggestion I like, especially with the friends and the family members, because chances are, I mean, your families are all great, I assume. I mean, they're all, and they're all supportive, and some of them may be really advanced scholars. I, I obviously don't know. But in general, you can probably find at least one family member or friend who is sort of aware of what you do, but doesn't quite get it all the way, so to speak. Those are perfect opportunities to practice that or to pull someone aside and say, hey, can I, can I throw this at you? Can I practice this in front of you? Um, and that can, that can speak wonders to uh, helping to put that together. And again, that student or that family member is probably not gonna nitpick on, well, you got, you got equation A wrong, or that math looks fuzzy to me, you know, or I, that, I don't follow that experiment. What you're gonna get is, did I understand that or did I not? It's like, oh, that's interesting, you know, or you'll get the glazed over at where you're going with this face, right? So you'll know where the, where the gauge is and then you can help hone and practice that and you can practice again on someone else. And then you pick out from different walks of life, so to speak, um, and kind of get those experiences. The second challenge we have on here is writing. And obviously this is, writing kind of fits in and I'll leave that, I'll just hit the high points because we'll get some more work on that tomorrow. But obviously again, while you're here, you're gonna have to write complex things. I mean, there'll be a various lengths and a various focuses um, and in various styles, but you're all gonna have to write long and complex scholarship of some sort while you're here. And that's the thing is the plug here as we move into tomorrow with my coaches here. If you know you're not a strong writer, like you're one of those people that can just sit down and, and line out an experiment from A to B and follow all of the things, but when it comes time to put it on paper or to talk about it out loud, that gets a little fuzzy. Um, that's what's something we can help with. That is kind of, that's the wheelhouse that we're designed for to be it hit you in that intersection of I, I can do this, I have the ability, but I'd like to be stronger at that. Um, so I don't want anybody to think that, well, I'm, I struggle with that and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, obviously, we have classes in writing. We have groups. We have coaches here. We have a writing center. There's lots of different areas where you can improve your writing. If you feel like you fall into that, I'm not a strong, strong writer category for that aspect of communication. <clears throat> so we have a, a good program for that. And then we'll touch on it again with networking. It's really easy when you're here. And I know I've met some students who struggle with this as well. It's really easy to get stuck in your silo, so to speak. Uh, whereas this is this is my window. These are the students I see regularly because we're in classes, we're doing field work. Um, I know there are lots of opportunities on campus to connect with other students, but it is really easy to fall in this trap, especially when we get toward the middle of the semester and everybody just puts their head down and is working on you know tests and papers and coursework it's really easy to kind of hone in on, all, on those students right there. So I don't know how many of you are shy or introverted. I know that probably could have been fleshed out a little bit more, but um, knowing that networking takes work and I can speak to that from a personal standpoint, that that is a skill I've, I have developed a little bit better in the last five years that I've been here in this job. Um, mainly out of necessity, because this is the job where I talk to groups like you, I go out and I'm into classrooms um, I've got, I think, three or four presentations set up with different actual cohorts, like in engineering and uh, sciences. 
to where I'll come over and speak to groups and just those students. I'll give kind of the same pitch I do here and I'll tell them kind of what programs we have, encourage them to participate in things. Um, but <clears throat> networking again is something you have to work at and have to put yourself in front of people. And that is something that we had to develop as, a, as we developed all these programs that did necessitate, you know, me kind of coming out from my silo here in the graduate college and moving out and being able willing to talk to those groups. Um, and a lot of times now I get invitations from them. I don't have to reach out to them anymore. They'll come to me and say, hey, I know you came and talked to us last time. Can you do it again? Um, so those are the kind of opportunities you'd be looking for um, as you come through here. And obviously you can, for most of your programs, I'm thinking there's going to be ability to attend conferences. There's lots of professional organizations. Um, I don't use LinkedIn as well as I probably should, but I know there are a lot of people who do rely on that as well. Um, so don't be afraid to plug in in a number of ways there. I don't remember that. That is the last slide, Ed. Okay, so there's the overview I've, gave, I've given you. So now what I want to kind of talk about, and I didn't put it up on a slide because I was hoping maybe more conversationally, but so we'll come back to the idea of, I, I brought up three minute thesis in the graduate showcase. And then there's one grad skills presentation that I'll, I'll hit on again, which is our oral defense workshop. Those are our three main ways that we develop communication. And I'll, I'll touch on, like I say, three minute thesis is the thing I know the most about because it's one I'm really involved in on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but I mentioned earlier when you asked about, well, how do you, how do you whittle a great number of students down? And last year we had 45 students sewn up, I think. What was the total number? How do you take that large group of 45? Sorry, I'm losing my voice. And whittle them down to 16. Yes, Adrian. Mm, that is a good question. What programs do we have for networking for online students? Um, I'll be honest, that is an area we need to improve upon. Um, we do reach out, we do uh, our grad skills presentations. Um, and our, our our online grad write that we host are designed for that purpose as well. But there probably are some areas where we can improve upon that. Um, so if there are specific ideas, maybe some of the online students in the audience have as far as what they might like to see, I would be willing to work with uh, with online cohorts as well. That is, we're getting better. That is an area that's slowly making progress as far as the different programs go. Um, but admittedly, that's an area we probably need to improve upon. Any other questions before? Sorry, I should have stopped there. Okay, so I'll talk about um, I'll talk about three MT. So I'll sort it because that's still easier to say. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about the nuts and bolts of that. You know, how do you how do kind of what we start with? What's the prizes at the end? But what I want to hone on in on for this particular presentation is kind of how we get in the middle. Because I would say when this three MT initially started. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Sweet ride. I wish I had a sweet ride like that. <laughs> so initially when 3MT started, um, which would have been the year before I started here, I think seven years ago now, it's crazy. It's been that long. Um, that was that year. We just kind of said, Hey, we, let's try this. Let's throw it out there. We'll see who shows up. Um, we had some mechanisms for practice and stuff, but it was more on the lines of students taking the initiative of, you know, providing a slide and three minutes or a presentation. Um, the gist of the presentation, I guess, well, before I go any further, so you just know is you have three minutes and one static slide to present whatever you're working on. And then it's up to you to figure out what goes in the presentation, what goes on the visual behind you. And then they work in tandem to hopefully work through the judges in front of you to be able to say, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Or, or that's really important. And just engagement. You're, you're judged on not only the the content of your presentation, but how well you engage the audience and how well you speak to your subject. So it's it's not a thing where it's a defense where you're getting judged on your content per se. You're getting judged on how well you project that content into, into the world with a lay audience. Um, so ideally with that, then the, the problem we face is, well, how do we help students build that? If we really want them to get up there for their three minutes and have every toolbox in their arsenal to be able to do the best three minutes they can, what, what can we provide to help them do that? So what we've developed here for our competition, uh, we usually start early in the fall for signing students out. And then we've developed a series of three workshops that hit kind of three core areas of what 3MT does. Um, I'm sure there are more as we go through, but we talk about how to communicate your scholarship, 
So kind of what I'm doing here, only more focused, we usually invite one of the communications professors over to kind of give you an idea. Well, how do you go about doing that? Because where do you start? You've got a, a typical thesis or dissertation might take you two hours to present. How on earth do you boil that down into three minutes? You know, what goes in, what stays? Again, fighting that notion of, well, if I don't tell them this and they won't know that, you know, and just fighting with yourself to say, okay, you know, what is essential, what is not to conveying this idea. Um, so we'll do a whole workshop centered around that to give students kind of idea of where to start, how to do that process. We have one specifically on slides because believe it or not, putting together a slide is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, we've had some slides that have been super minimal, which have not been so great. We've had some slides that have been like, oh my gosh, what else can you put on that thing? Um, so we try to give you some ideas. It's, well, how do I make this pop? You know, each, each department is different. But we try to find that maximum image to be able to convey, okay, that that visual behind behind you that a judge might look up and scale through and then come back to you with your presentation, it enhances it rather than distracts from it. Um, as I know, we've worked with a lot of students who come in with a slide they thought was really spot on and they stand in front of and do their presentation and then they get to the end of the practice session and we all look up and say, well, I, I didn't catch most of that because I was too busy. What does that mean? Where does that line go? What, why is it that color? You know, all those things that we can work through, but we do that specifically with the slides so that you know you have the best representation at the end. I think one in her. The third aspect, and I think it's this is I think it's kind of the key one. I don't know if many universities do this, but we invite a professor over from theater arts and take you through stage presentation. And it's a unique presentation because he is a classically trained actor. I mean, hopefully we'll get Gordon again because he's fantastic, but he is a Shakespearean actor. And that's the lens he brings to it. I mean, he understands that we're all doing different scholarship. You might be presenting on, you know, social work, engineering, you know, history, you know, bio, biosciences. He's aware that everybody has kind of thing, but what he's going to bring to the party is, here's how I approach this as an actor, how I remember my lines, how I deal with stress, how I manage my breathing, how I don't be a crazy person all over the place with my arms and hands, uh, which is one of the things that I learned in that thing, because I didn't know for the most part, I used to be really bad. I don't know what to do with my hands. So now I'm a little, a little more calm because I recognize about that myself. It's like, oh, I do that. I talk with my hands when I don't need to sometimes. Um, but ideally, we'll take that that third presentation really brings that home to be able to say, okay, well, here's the, the things I can draw upon. So when I'm up on that stage in front of those judges, I can focus on my content because I have, I have it down. I know where I want to stand. I know how much I want to move. I know where I want to take breaths. I know where I want to slow down. I know where I want to speed up. Um, and it really puts that together and brings that package home so that you're not necessarily just spoken on the academic half. And we do that for a couple of reasons, because obviously, again, as we put it there, I want all of you, if you do three minute thesis to win money, I mean, I want all of you top four, walk away with prize. I want to send you out with cash. I, I do. But if you don't find yourself in that top four, I don't want you to go away empty handed. I want you to walk away with a set of skills that you can utilize it in your disciplines, in uh, your future employment, with your family members, with friends, you have those tools to be able to say, okay, I know how to convey what I'm working on because I've done this, I've done the work, I know how to do it. Um, and then if your work changes and you need to make that, then you, again, you have the toolbox to make that adjustment to realize, okay, hey, my research has shifted. Now I'm gonna let de emphasize this part. I'm gonna bring this in. And you have the idea and you have that, that overarching framework. So ideally that's what I wanna uh, frame, you know, three MTS. One, it's a lot of fun. And it's one, it's the best thing I get to do in my role here at the graduate college, because when I get to see a ton of students doing a bunch of different things, um, and they all come in raw, like I say, they all come in like gung-ho, I'm gonna do this, this is this is my presentation. And then again, it ends up being five minutes and they're all like, oh, that's too long, how can I do that? And then you get to see the progression as it comes down and it's like, okay, there I can see the hone in, the hone in, and then they come in and it's 254 and it's just that success rate. Um, the record, by the way, is 11 and a half. I always put that out there though. I just let him go. I would have stopped him, but I wanted to see how long he would go. So he went to 11 and a half, um, which is crazy though. But I bring that up though. But the next time he came into practice, he had it down to four minutes because that first time he rambled because he's like, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm in my discipline. I'm giving my talk. Here's what I'm working on. And he just, I think the clock went out the window and he just fell back into, I'm, I'm just talking about my, my stuff, right? Which is easy to do. I've done that too. When you're in a presentation, you just get, you know, here's my eight points and I'm just going to go for it. Right. Um, but even in that instance, those students, and it always comes in, and we have, we have never had a student go over the three minutes. We've had some, some stop right at the buzzer. 
Um, but generally, they always go from that massive amount of how can I do this down to um, <clears throat> how do you know how do we work this? Um, I know I'll, I'll I'll throw Lacey out because I know Lacey did three MT last year. So if you have any questions from an actual student who's done it as well, I mean you're feel free to pick Lacey's brain as well because she made it all the way through the preliminaries into the finals. So she's had an experience with all the different pieces we do. Um, and sometimes again, it's invaluable to hear that from a student, so to speak. Um, so there's the kind of the communication hub. I'm going to switch the slide I don't have. Um, so we'll move on, talk about the showcase, which I don't, I don't know as much about since I don't, I mean, I participate in the showcase, but I'm not in charge of kind of putting it on. But the showcase, as we, as we discussed earlier, obviously there's lots of cash available, thousands of dollars available. And that's, that's something you want to strive for, for sure. But you can think of the showcase as a giant room full of posters, people milling about. That is your ultimate level to, to network. To get someone to stop in front of your poster, I, you know, like when I go around the showcase, I'll usually stop. There's a lot of students who do both 3MT and showcase. I try to stop at all of my 3MT students because I know, obviously I know who they are. Um, and then I usually challenge myself to stop at at least, you know, two or three other posters per row and say, hi, you know, who are you? What are you working on? Um, that is going to be an invaluable experience as you go through your research to be able to do that. And you never know who's going to stop. Um, I mean, there's staff running about, there's other students who mill about, we usually do a couple of sessions, there's faculty members who are around judging, there are faculty members who just show up. Um, the provost came last time, was there for like 45 minutes, and I, I know that he's a busy man, so for him to stay for 45 minutes, look at posters, means he was pretty invested. Um, but you can think of that not only as a communication piece to talk about your work, but that's networking, networking in a nutshell. Um, those happen, so usually, like I say, so three-minute thesis will start next month, which is scary, um, and then we'll usually workshop in October, November, looking at January, or January sometime for competition. The showcase always falls in April, so you'll have, you guys will have time. And again, whether that fits in your schedule as incoming students, maybe that doesn't work year one, but keep that in mind for year two. We have had some first-year students. I had the first-year student do 3MT, not this year, but the year before, and he, he presented on what he wanted his proposal to be, so it's not impossible. Um, it depends on the students. Most students want to wait until they actually have something to report, whether it's not, maybe it's not a finished product, but they at least have something tangible to, to hang on to. But if you're interested in jumping in both feet, don't feel like you can't participate just because you're starting year one. Um, yeah. And then the last piece, um, I touched upon it with the grad skills and I'll just, I'll hit it again really quick is we do a lot of work with to preparing students to, to defend. Um, now, initially, that obviously did focus the more on thesis and dissertation, but the way we do that is we'll bring in faculty members that try to recruit three faculty members from different areas of the college um, to speak to not only kind of the overarching things they went through as graduate students, because they've all finished the process and gone on an hour on the other side of the table, so to speak. So they can speak to what you're going through, and then they can speak to what happens on their end as well. Um, and I'll try to pull from different areas so that you'll get a... a at least three or four faculty members who you can pointedly ask questions about specific to their disciplines or in general, whatever you feel like will help you in your preparation. And I know we do that in preparation of our kind of per semester defenses, um, but I think the same skills translate to any presentation you'll do, uh, whether that, again, proposal, grant, if you're talking to an outside group, you're presenting at a conference. Um, a lot of those skills still do translate. So I would encourage students to at least be aware of that. Maybe you don't come to the session, maybe you watch the recording, um, but definitely invaluable as you go through, as you think about you know, presenting your work in a more in a definitive setting as an expert. Um, and the key thing we'll focus on in that group, again, is to, to really let you guys understand you are the experts. Um, I get the faculty members to say that because it's really, really powerful when they look at the students and say, hey, we know you're the expert in this. We're not trying to trip you up. We want to know what you know. Yes, Adrian. Oh, right. um, are the showcases and three minute pieces of competition limited to graduate work, or can students utilize previous undergraduate research in our yard? That's a good question. So, whether the the graduates, uh, the showcase and three minute thesis are res res ah, reserved for graduate work, the answer to that question is yes. It will have to be work that you've done here as a graduate student. Um, Again, that can be anything from a classroom project to your overarching culminating activity, but it has to be research you've done here as a Boise State student. So, and do it in while you graduate. Yes. <laughs> I depend. 
No, that, that's a great question. So the question is, is what's the difference kind of between that three MT experience of three minutes and a normal defense time frame? That'll depend on the department. Um, but I think on average, I think most graduate defenses last about 45 to 60 minutes. Um, and those are usually split up into a couple of halves. There's a public portion where the student will give their, their talk. And then there's usually time set aside because those are all public per policy. So there's a chance for whoever's in the audience to ask questions. There's a little bit of time for that. Um, but generally, yeah, it takes, and, you know, some go shorter, but I would budget if you're looking at that. Yeah, it's about a 35 to 50 minute or 60 minute presentation. So you see the contrast between that and that three minute window is pretty, is pretty drastic. Um, and that causes you to really hone in on that message. Like I say, it really causes you to focus on uh, not only the important aspects of it, but also the impact. Because I'll be honest, if you do 3MT, that's what I require, or by, I advise most of the students, is the process is important. Don't get me wrong. You're going to want to tell those judges, you know, especially I mean, if you got to work with cool lasers or, or you know, got to go to Africa or somewhere that's really super fancy, you're going to want to tell them that too, because it's part of your experience, right? It's part of who you are. It's part of what you did. But you're going to want to use that, utilize that to really focus in on the impact of it, because that process has to impact that. Because in that three minutes, what you have to leave the judges with is that lasting impression of, of that student. Oh yeah, that's the student that talked about Africa or that's the student that talked about recycling. I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily super cool, but you, what you wanna do is that impression of where that judge knows that's the student that talked about that. And that is the key to being, to being successful in that engagement process. Um, you now, adding in all the other stuff, like I said, don't ever tell students to take, you know, take out all the cool stuff and just make it, you know, you know, whatever, you gotta, gotta have a healthy medium of the two, but in three minutes, you gotta be economical with, here's my process and here's what you should remember. And it all fits together. I say once students get into it and realize, you know, what kind of spin they can put on it, what kind of personality they can put on it. I mean, it, it just, I've never seen it not come together um, in, in all the time that I've been here. Some students decide not to as they go through the workshops, that's fine too. If you sign up for 3MT and you go through the three workshops and decide it doesn't work, schedule wise or it doesn't work I you know nobody's gonna look at you sideways if you decide it's just not a fit for you in that season um so I would encourage people to sign up and you know kind of know there's it's you know it's definitely a in and out type of thing um but I just encourage it's a great experience to go through I say and we try to make it as fun as possible I mean it is a little bit of work to put stuff together um uh, but we meet often we practice often we try to make it fun I mean I want it to be a good experience for the students as well as they build build those skills. Any questions on communication? I got like three minutes left. Yeah, you're all gonna rush out and sign up for 3MT as soon as possible, right? <laughs> I'm looking at my social work student because I've only had one of those in three years. <laughs> but, all right, well, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Questions about the previous time. Okay. Um, so um, with the three MT, like we have some stuff that we get, like maybe from our pastor that we're taking it. Like that's what I'm going to be working on right in the pastor's mm -hmm. office. Can we send it over to get an idea on if it's if it's enough put together for that person, or just bring it to the workshop? I depends on what what makes you comfortable. I mean, if you're if you're not sure, I I will gladly sit down with students and you can tell me kind of where you're at, and we can discuss the ins and outs of of. Yeah, where that fits on the spectrum. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm also fine if you just come in and say, this is what I'm working with. And because in the process of the workshops, you'll hone that as well. But I, I'm more than happy to meet with students and, and help you flesh out the ideas. I know our coaches would be able to do that as well. If you just want somebody to talk to you to say, hey, here's what I'm bringing to the, to the table. You know, where does this fit on, on the spectrum? And then we can, yeah, we can help you craft that and decide where it fits. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Okay. As an interview graduate student, I am not sure if my program requires a dissertation to complete the uh, program. I'm a first year MSW. Do you know where I can find something that is there? Okay. So the question there is obviously the student doesn't isn't doesn't know what your culminating activity is or doesn't know what the culminating activity for that is, which is totally fine. Um and I can even speak to this if it's wrong, but the MSWs don't do thesis or dissertation. You guys have is capstone or portfolio? Or is there an option? I think, yeah. I, I, yeah. So I think, yeah, I think he's right. I think so. I think for the MSW program, there isn't one like overarching written culminating activity. 
I think it's a series of things you put together and that's all done in department. Uh, and I think that'll just depend on, on, I mean, you're kind of all in MSW, but with whatever focus you're on, whatever clini clinical work you do, um, I think that'll all come together in the program toward the end. Um, as there, as you go though, I say there's probably, and we'll find out there are little pieces and there's a lot of social work students who will come over and ask for help with the individual pieces of their clinical work and their writing. So that's kind of where we plug in there. But as far as I know, there's not any large. Um, if you have questions about how that works too, I would contact the, uh, the, the coordinator for the program um, or contact the admin. They'll be able to tell you, okay, if you're incoming here, this is your catalog year, these are the requirements. Um, and if you need help finding that person, you can email me and I can put you in touch. That's fine too. Because yeah, there's every program has ins and outs and different things they do as far as how it puts together. Some of which comes through the graduate college for review, some of which doesn't. So if there's ever a question for any of you on, on that, obviously don't be afraid to reach out. Say I'm not sure if I'm where I'm supposed to be and we'll we'll tell you. That is what we're here for. Any other questions about anything generally? It doesn't have, doesn't have to be about, about things here, but hopefully that'll be a good a good overview. Um, obviously, I try to sell you know 3MT and the showcase and some of our skills presentations hard. Yeah. A lot of questions, but I know on our campus we have the grad center like success. You do. Is that for right now that that site is designed as a resource okay. every graduate student is enrolled in it uh, at some point as we go through i do envision i'm not being a requirement but adding things in that can enhance and have, give you ways to interact with the success center um, we have some programs that have badges um, ideally at some point maybe there's there's a way to or we maybe put on some classes where you get a certificate None of that is fleshed out right now. So eventually I'm hoping that the piece will be added in. But for now, what you'd use that resource for is to go through and get information about what we do. I think there's an overview of our programs. Um, I think there might even be a link on there we need to change that went to our old scheduling system. Um, but it's it's a resource. So fully, and you know, it's just there. It's not a not a requirement. I mean, you can access it as many times, many or as little times as you need to. Um, and hopefully we'll keep it updated. Um, for anybody that does. Um, three minute thesis down the road. We have a Canvas page for that as well that helps us administer the students. The thesis academy program I talked about last session will probably have a Canvas page as well. Um, and ideally, it'll, it'll have some interactions. I, it's not something necessarily a, it's mandatory to your graduate experience, but it'll, hopefully, it'll have um, resources and stuff that you can plug into to again build those skills. And then there may be a piece or two there where we, you'll fill out a survey or a questionnaire or something just so I can gauge you know how we're affecting and how we're impacting. Um, but it's not, no one's going to get a surprise pop quiz <laughs> on, on our Canvas page. Although that would be fun. Actually, it probably wouldn't be fun. It would freak people out and I would get in trouble. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, utilize that as much as you want. And if, if you are on that Canvas page and you notice something that's not relevant or seems out of date, let me know. And we'll, we'll, we try to update it every fall, but if we miss something, let me know and we can update it. Because I'm sure you're not the only student to, to log into Canvas and go, what's that? It's like, um, did I sign up for that? Yeah, but hmm. all right. Well, I think that concludes Grad Prep Day One. Thank you guys for, for joining us online and for sitting through a couple presentations. Um, hopefully you got an overview of kind of what services we offer, some of the communication and networking things that we offer here. Again, ideally maybe you remembered all of the different things I told you. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, you can email me. Uh, I didn't put my contact up there, but it's just my name. So Wayne Cochran at boisestate.edu. If you really want it super simple, you can email success at boisestate.edu. That comes to me as well. That one's super easy to remember. Sometimes I email that one too because it's easier to remember than my own name. Um, you can email either one. Um, or obviously, we're, we're in 117 downstairs. Um, Eventually, I mean, if, if you come down here, I mean, we're kind of busy with grad prep this week, but as we get into the rhythms of the schools here next next week, um, I'm here, what, I'm here three days a week. Our coaches are here. Generally, if you come into the office, you'll find one of the, one of us there, sometimes more than one, maybe two or three, all three of us. But um, if need be, pop in, ask questions. I know the recruiters down there. Um, I'll have, there'll be other students milling about. It'll be a lot of, a lot of people. So if you need 
need assistance or want to know more about anything we talked about or where it might fit in your program or, or ways we can improve. Like I say, if you notice an area where we need um, to flesh out our programs, let me know and we'll work on, we'll do our best to work on doing that. Um, but <clears throat> ideally, you know, it's just a matter of getting the, getting the word out there just so that students know what's available to them. That's all I kind of want to do. And then you can choose where that fits on your timeline, knowing that success is different for each one of you. It's just, it's not a cookie cutter thing for graduate students. So we're here, utilize our services as you will, plug in where you, where you fit. And then, yeah, we'll, we can kind of, we'll go, we'll meet you where you are. Um, so yeah, I'll reiterate for the rest of the week. Um, and I'm horrible at closing presentations. I've, I've noticed that I tend to just keep going. Prize my wife nuts too. Um, so for the rest of the week, we're going to have themes. So tomorrow we're going to talk about stress and how to conquer it. We're going to get more involved in this, what is graduate writing. And I'm going to, my coaches are going to handle that tomorrow. Um, they'll give you an idea of what they put into their writing. Obviously give you a chance to ask questions, um, give you some tips and kind of a broad overview of kind of what that umbrella looks like. Wednesday, we're going to talk about resources. We're going to talk about using how to keep uh, resources together. We're going to bring the librarian over from the library, and she's going to give you a rundown of what's available to you as graduate students, uh, give you a chance to ask questions about how you access different services. And then Thursday, come on, come back here, and we'll have one of our associate dean in residence. We'll take you through mentorship. And that's a session all by itself, because I think that's an important piece. Uh, hopefully, you guys will find that mentor while you're here. Um, she can kind of fill in kind of how you might go about that, give you some tips as to how to explore those relationships. Um, but I think it's a key piece to, to graduate school is to find those right, the right people to connect with, not only your peers, but your faculty members as well. And we'll talk about that. So you have those tools in your arsenal when you start school on Monday. So you can hit the ground running. All right. And you have more questions? Um, no, but I just say um, tomorrow, if you're coming to the Yes. That would be helped out in 101 downstairs. I am trying to work on getting this room with Mr. Dano. So if you show up in 101 and you can take it upstairs, we'll have some information down there. And if we find out enough time, we will. We'll get an email over there and get it up. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate it. Stop at any time, shoot me an email. Uh, we, are, we are here to help. <laughs> Good luck with your semester. <laughs>